In our lab, we study the role of FOXG1 gene in the brain development. FOXG1 is a transcription factor, meaning that it actually recognizes specific DNA signature in the genome, it binds to DNA and controls downstream target gene expression. When one copy of FOXG1 gene is lost, it causes human syndrome called the FOXG1 syndrome. The FOXG1 syndrome patient show severe intellectual disability, seizures, they cannot sit up, they cannot talk, they have feeding difficulty and excessive crying. And one of major signature of their brain is the loss of corpus callosum, which is the bridge that connects right side and left side of the brain. And this bridge is very thin or lost in Fox G1 syndrome kids. We first asked whether we can use mouse as a model system to study this. So we looked at the mouse that lost only one copy of Fox G1. So it's a global heterozygous mice. And sure enough, mice, just like human, show the loss of that bridge. So what we know about Fox G1 in the brain development is that Fox G1 is highly, highly expressed in the embryonic brain, and it plays an important role. So if you actually look at where Fox G1 is expressed in the brain, it's expressed in the neural progenitor cells, which are still proliferating, and Fox G1 is very critical to make them keep proliferating. Fox G1 is also expressed in mature neurons as well in the cortex. So Fox G1 expression level is very high in cortical projection neurons. So when we saw this bridge problem in the brain in Fox G1 heterozygous mouse as well as human Fox G1 syndrome brains, we had this question of what does Fox G1 do to make this bridge formed? Could that be Fox G1 in neural stem cells or could there be any contribution from Fox G1 in neurons? To ask that question, we deleted FOXG1 only specifically in cortical projection neurons. And we looked at not only FOXG1 conditional knockout brain, which lost both copies of FOXG1 in the neurons, as well as FOXG1 conditional heterozygous mouse brain. In this case, the brain neurons lost only one copy of FOXG1. And in these brains, neural progenitor cells still keep two copies of FOXG1, so they're normal levels of FOXG1, but as they become neurons, they're losing either one copy or two copies of the FOXG1. So in this FOXG1 conditional knockout, there's no bridge. So there's no corpus callosum. No axons was crossing the middle line of this conditional knockout brain. So clearly, you gotta have FOXG1 in neurons to form this corpus callosum bridge. Um, we also looked at Fox G1 conditional heterozygous bra brains because we thought, well, what happens if you lose just one copy of Fox G1 in just the neurons? In this case, you are making corpus callosum, but it's not normal. So we wanted to understand where Fox G1 is binding to and who is Fox G1's partner. So we used the chip seq analysis to look for where Fox G1 is binding in the mouse genome. And we also looked for the DNA signature motif, and we found the two DNA signature motifs. Number one was the binding site for Fox G1. Number two was the binding site for RP58. These Fox G1 and RP58, two proteins, are going together, and they are binding to this area of the genome that has binding site for both Fox G1 and RP58. What's even more amazing is that when we looked at what are the genes that they are binding together, those genes that control neuronal migration and exon guidance. These are truly critical genes to build this corpus callosum bridge. Our study shows that you have to have two copies of Fox G1 to form the corpus callosum bridge. I'd like to thank my daughter Yuna Lee, who inspired us to do this study. When Yuna was a baby, she started to have seizures. She had intellectual disability. She couldn't sit up, she couldn't walk. And we looked at her brain, sent a brain MRI to neurologist, and we got the answer that her brain has corpus callosum agenesis, a signature for Fox G1 syndrome. And we sequenced her Fox G1 gene and we found the mutation. She lost one copy of Fox G1. The better understanding we have about what Fox G1 does in normal brain and what happens when Fox G1 is not there, the more likely that we will be able to find a cure for Fox G1 syndrome.